Now, here's the thing, which passive income to me at the time was, oh, shit, I can um, I can make money without physically having to be somewhere. All right. Welcome back to the Mac podcast, where we talk about anything in entrepreneurship, business and of course, real estate, which we'll go into heavy today. Um, guys, we always challenge the conventional thinking, trying to, you know, not follow the common herd, but unfollow the herd. And, you know, if you get some value from this message today, I got an awesome guest with us. Please, you know, share it with somebody. There's no ads on this. Like the only way I can spread the word is through you guys listening. Um, I would super appreciate if you share this with someone, it'll provide value to them. Um, and, you know, it'll make you a good friend as well. So, um, and today I got a special guest that went from W2 for a long time to an entrepreneur, to a real estate investor. Um, he's had quite the journey. Uh, he's one of the inspirations of me actually even starting on LinkedIn uh, and starting posting and and actually creating my own brand. So I look up to this guy a lot. Um, he tells everyone to, you know, try to get out of their comfort zones and try life on. Uh, Maurice Villagine, mm -hmm. thanks, man. I appreciate you taking the time. Man, it's it's my pleasure. It's been great to interact with you on social media, man, and get to know you. And I love your story. It's a great example of how and why people should get off the bench the way you and I were just talking about. Yeah, man. I, yeah, like I said, and in, in, in like, I got off the bench as an entrepreneur, but I didn't get off the bench like to create content and like deliver a message. Like, you know, I like, you always think about it's bragging or whatever, but uh, you know, you, you, you just, it helps so many people, you know, when they start reaching out, it's like, it's, yeah, I, we're just trying to tell you the secrets of, of committing. So try to, let's just tell everyone like, you know, where are you, where are you at right now? And, and cause I, I know you're, you're all across, <laughs> you're everywhere. And, <laughs> across and, the world and what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. man. Well, I'm in Washington, DC today. What you're alluding to is the fact that I have a joy of experiencing the planet. And I spend a lot of time in, um, Cyprus and the Mediterranean, uh, Lebanon. So if folks who tend to follow me, a lot of them are in Lebanon. So I want to send them love because of what's happening over there so that is 100 on my mind in fact it's a it's a big part of my day when i wake up now to think about my friends and stuff over there because i lived there uh this summer for two months oh, oh wow cool. yeah yeah and i'm kind of kicked out of my home now so i kind of want to go back but um yeah so i am i am uh out of the w2 world here i'll start at the end i, I like i like starting at the end I think yeah yeah i'm a father of two um i'm out of the w2 world now um, because of real estate and other things that you talk about, um, Haitian immigrant kid born in New York, raised in Boston, ended up in Washington, DC through university of Virginia. And just like probably a lot of people listening to the podcast, I did the typical work world stuff right out of school, got hired by Accenture, which is a management consulting firm and frankly stayed with them for 25 years, um, retired in 2000 or, uh, 2021. So two years ago. And but the beautiful thing is, like, I leveraged that W that W two or nine to five really well. I invested in real estate since I was twenty one. Became a street cop when I was thirty three at the same time, and then was also in the military as a federal agent at the same time. Um, but all of it to say, my mantra is trying life on. I I was very aware the entire time that the reason that you and I do the entrepreneurial stuff that we do, and why other people do the nine to five stuff they do, so we can go live. And I live probably to a fault emphatically. Um, and yeah, man, that's that's where I am today. I'm just experiencing time and financial freedom and I am plugged into planet and earth as intended. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah, you yeah, I think I, I just read your messages and you're yeah, you you discover the whole planet, as you said. Yeah. I mean, you're <laughs> you're you're everywhere and yeah. Um, but I love that, like the beginning of your career, like it was, like you said, it was pretty straightforward. You went yeah, out yeah. and got a W-2 job. You you didn't do anything crazy. I mean, you were just following a path, mm -hmm. you know, when, when you were working those, you know, what, what caused you to want more, you know, or just kind of keep doing what you were doing? What, what caused yeah. you to kind of keep wanting to level up or, or what sparked you? I got to remember sometimes that when I go on these platforms and thank you for doing a platform that's going to help people that you have different listeners than other people have. Cause I feel like I've said this so many times, but it's worth it. I, my father sent me uh, to France when I was 15 years old 
and um, being a knucklehead kid from Boston, I, I wasn't always getting in trouble, but I wasn't really hanging around the right places either. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But he sends me on his trip to France, um, 30 days uh, with an exchange student's family that stayed with me the previous year. So this is 1990. I was 15 years old. Oh, okay. Drove around the country in a stick shift Range Rover, like this old 83 beat up, beat up puke green stick shift Range Rover. <laughs> and it was it was phenomenal. It was exercising my French language because I'm Haitian. It was girls, castles, funerals, weddings, food, wine. I, at the time, I just didn't understand that the world was bigger than Boston or my neighborhood. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah. That was, that was the catalyst. And then the second catalyst was when I was 21, I found the, the book Personal Finance for Dummies. I wanted to fix my finances. I got interested in that. And then they had a passage in there on passive income. Now, here's the thing, mm. which passive income to me at the time was, oh, shit, I can um, I can make money without physically having to be somewhere. Mm. So yeah. if you think about the story I just told you from France and travel. It's like, man, if I can make passive income, I can go back to having those kinds of emotions and experiences. And where else in the world can I go? So that's how it all started. I had just had this why. It was, I didn't get into real estate because, oh, man, I'm going to be the mogul. Or I'm going to be this. I'm going to be that. It was literally because I had an emotion that the world was bigger than where I came from. And mm -hmm. how do I go experience more of it, whether it's entrepreneurial stuff or meeting people or whatever it is, um, yeah. that was the driver for all of it. Wow. Yeah. No, that's that's awesome. And you, you know, you you got you, you took the leap of faith and, and how did you, did you do the 401k? I mean, you've yeah. done different investing paths, maybe talk about each investing path and what you found within it. You know, so if it was just simple oh. 401k, but maybe talk a little bit about that. To be clear, I touch nowadays, I touch about $250 million worth of real estate, whether it's through Quattro Capital, my syndicating company in the U S or the, the international stuff I do from a real estate development perspective. But I don't, I don't prescribe that that's the route for people. I don't. And so when I started working, thank God I picked up that book, Personal Finance for Dummies, because the, so I started working October 20th, 1997. The, the date sticks with me for some reason. <laughs> oh, I, I know why it sticks with me, because I graduated from ground combat school October 3rd, 1997, drove back to D.C. and started work October 20th. I remember okay. that. Um, my first raise the next year, I so I was I was putting seven percent in four hundred one k, and then my first raise next year I put it to the max, and I maxed out four hundred one k for twenty five years. It's 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 fairly sizable. It's yeah. sizable. I'm I'm gonna say it's actually no, I won't say the number. It's sizable. Put it that way. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um. But here's the problem, and there there's nothing. There's nothing wrong with the 401k, but it has a fundamental flaw. The flaw is I can't, here I am 46. I'm I'm not, I mean, 48. I'm not tapping that money to live right now. I'm not going to tap that. I don't think I'll ever tap it now because I have real estate, but I can't use that money to go live life at 20, at 30, at 40. It's a flaw because if you, if you follow the normal path of things and we get out of work in 60s, I know people take vacations and stuff like that. But when I mean plugged into life, I have time to do amazing things relative to what I want. If you wait that long, you're not going to experience, let's say, your trip, first trip to Italy or your first hiking through the Colorado Rockies. If you do it at 30, it's a very different experience than if you do it at 65. Hmm. It's, yeah. it's, it's all. Okay. So I've had multiple modes of um, investing, primarily real estate. Okay. Uh, because of the passive income. And even if the rates of return, let's say the average annual return is 10%, 8%, which is not that great, or 20%, it never really mattered to me. What mattered to me was, how do I pay this thing off? Because that's going to be a thousand bucks a month for the rest of my life. Mm. I didn't care about, oh, I can do better on this thing. I was like, I already have this thing. I'm gonna yeah. Do that. yeah. Real estate gave me passive income. My 401k and a few other things gave me large scale equity that I can apply to my family legacy and societal stuff. And then um, the, the, the development work that I do over in Cyprus now, that, that is shockingly uh, profitable. 
but I did it to, to have a new lifestyle. I didn't do it from an investing perspective. But interestingly enough, because there's so much migration to that island, think the war in Russia, think the earthquake in Turkey, God rest those people's soul in every situation, and think what's going on in the Mideast, a lot of people are coming to Cyprus. Mm. They have pushed the property values up to the extent where 300,000 has turned into 1.6 in two years. Wow. Yes. Jeez. So it's just been, it's been this track, man. And it's, um, it's all been purposeful. The first real estate life was for financial freedom. That was single family homes. Second real estate life was to help other people get there faster. That was the multifamily stuff syndication. Yeah. And the third real estate is my development stuff, which is for lifestyle. Cool. I, I love that. And, and so you, what, what took you the leap? I'm, I'm curious, we're going to go back a little bit in the story because you kind of yeah. went through it, but I just, you know, every, I got so many and, and you know, rates are high right now. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So no buying real estate mathematically just is harder, right? It's slower. There's yeah. not as much velocity. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of people sitting, a lot of people, meaning 99% of people would never mm -hmm. buy real estate because they don't understand it. How did you growing you you did 25 years of maxing out a 401k to know yeah. that you're not even going to touch it and then yeah, you're like how do it. i figure out did that passive income book push you for was it passive income for personal finance for dummies is it, that it, what it, pushed you to real estate no 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 okay I, I found the passage i found a passage in that book it was very it was a okay. very small thing it was like on page 94 what is this what is passive income that made me curious. And then sometimes we have to get lucky. And I got lucky. And the way that I got lucky was in 2002, I was buying a place to live. I was just 25 years old. I was buying okay. a place to live. But it was at the beginning of the real estate boom of that time. Okay. So when I bought that condo for, I think, 135, within three months, it, the same floor plan next building sold for 30 grand more. Mm. My father, I called him because I, I, don't, I don't really understand what this is. He said, you just made 30 grand. And the way that my brain works and still worked at the time and still works today, I always equate money to what it does for people's lives. And I said, 30 grand, that's someone's salary for a year. Hmm. You're telling me I just did that in one transaction by accident? He's like, yo, uh, okay. So we don't have Google or anything back then yet. So I went to the library. I joke about it on social media all the time, Fairfax <laughs> County Library. I just went to the business aisle. I picked up a book. It happened to be about condo investing. And then later I found a, uh, another book on the millionaire real estate investor. And it just told me what to do. I was like, how do I buy that thing again that just made me 30 grand in three months? So by the end of that year, I had bought 10, 10 condos, 10 in a year. Wow. You went crazy there. I mean, like I went nuts. I didn't know, <laughs> but if you, I'm buying them all. Yeah. Brother, if you take a, a kid who I was, I certainly was not uh, poor. My parents work really hard as educators to provide for me and my brother, but we, we didn't have much. We, we were broke. So you're, 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 you're telling a 25 year old who's making $47,000 at a firm. He just made $30,000 one transaction. Hell yeah. I'm going to go do this over and over and over again until I can get to a certain point. So you were, did you say 25 at that time? Mm, yep. It's 25. Yep. So 25. So like the year of 25 to 26, you had 10 condos under your belt. I went nuts, man. And probably within like 10 years, I think I had 50 and then whittled it down. 2008 hit me. I ran into some problems and that 50 whittled down to 35. And then I sold some of the 35 because they appreciated significantly, mm. took that money and then paid off the rest. Gotcha. That's that, that's that story I tell on social all the time. When people yeah, like, yeah. Yep. yeah. How did yeah. you pay it all off? Because I didn't go buy more. I just paid off what I had. Yeah, that's that's awesome. And I think anyone listening to this would be like, okay, how do you start? Well, uh, Maurice, and, and how did you, maybe maybe in the next question, what I'm thinking yeah. to, the, to the guy sitting on the sidelines, like, hey, I'm ready. I'm maybe 35. Now I have mm -hmm. kids and now I have a lifestyle, right? Like this elevated lifestyle. How yeah. do I take that leap and go buy 10 properties today? Like, how would you do it? Is is it changed at all? No, if you were to do it again? No, no, no. The way you go buy 10 properties is you buy the first one and focus on that. Yeah. And like I coach people in lifestyle design now, one of the 
one of the verticals in there is financial freedom. So we talk about real estate and other stuff all the time. But one of the things I tell people is, listen, man, do the first deal. Don't don't worry about the rate of return of your money. Just don't lose money. We, we're not going to lose money. <laughs> yeah. If the thing's cash flowing 20 bucks, 30 bucks, 40 bucks, like that's fine. OK, you'll probably have some expenses that will eat you up a little bit and all that. But just get the momentum. Just do the deal so you understand that you can actually do it. So it's just, look, save 20 grand, save 30 grand from your job. Hustle, save the money. Go find something that's at $100,000, 120, 130 price yeah. point. Do that deal. Feel it. Understand it. Find a property manager to take care of it. Stop worrying about a property manager as 10, 10%. That 10% is so worth the time that it will free up for you to go find the next one. Right. Right. Yeah. So the way that you get to 10 and get off the sideline, you go to work, you pay yourself first, systematically, automatically. Before you pay the cable company, pay yourself first. You are more important. Store up 10 grand, store up 20 grand or partner with someone. You guys store 20, 30 together, buy something, 100 grand, 200 grand. Not in your state. Okay, go find somewhere where there's a price point that's reasonable. Do the deal, get the education, and then you start to build from there. Boom! Look at that, mic drop. Yeah. <laughs> good one. I I think okay. that's 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 great. That should be good for anyone listening to this. I mean, yeah. re replay that. Stuff. Listen to that again. It's it's commit to the first one and and yeah. move yourself forward. I um. So then you um. You know, you moved. How, how long were you working at W two while you owned all these? Like this was a side Whole hustle time. for you, right? It was a total side hustle. Yeah, so my, my, I understand. I have a kind of a weird story, but it's purposeful. So I was a corporate exec for twenty five years. I was a street cop, starting at age thirty three, but did it at the same time. That was at night. So corporate during the day, street cop at night. And then real estate was all the time, but really during the weekends and in between calls when I was on patrol and stuff. Yeah. Okay. It's not, it's not, um, I didn't transition from W2 or being an employee into being an entrepreneur. It's that I was just leveraging the W2 to buy real estate because I wanted more freedom at some point. That's all right. it was. I am hyper grateful for the company that I worked for. Hyper grateful. Because what it did as a consultant, I was always solving business challenges for clients. Mm -hmm. I was briefing CEOs and heads of the Department of Defense and talking to generals. And I was doing so much stuff. In the, in the, in, as a street cop, I was dealing with homeless people having a mental health crisis and running into homes that had a burglar and being shot at. And it, oh, geez. All, all these all, and there's no glory in that that's just part of the job but okay all these experiences same thing in the military right i was um i was running a field office of federal agents in turkey and my counterpart was the chief of police for the turkish national police for the eastern half of the entire country so he and i would spend time together all the time entrepreneurialism is great but i don't want people to discount all the experiences that the, the regular work world gives you. I could not have done that in a regular world. It just makes me a better entrepreneur. Yeah. Um, so I value what I did in the work world. It's just that there's no way in hell I would ever go back. To that. <laughs> <laughs> well, My time is too valuable. <laughs> and and that, yeah, that's valid. I think, you know, what you see now today is, is everyone's like passive income is a way for you to quit your job. And, uh, you know, and, and you hear a lot about that. And I think it's, it's not realistic. It's not a way. It's not a path. I, I, you can create enough passive income to exit, but you have to be strategic. You got to know what your basic needs number is. So mm. if like it costs you four grand to live, meaning food, shelter, water, then what you're doing is you're trying to store money to buy assets to generate at least four grand because that's what you need to exist on this planet. Mm -hmm. But here's the trick. What people don't realize is once your basic needs are covered, your world opens. You don't feel stress anymore. It's not that you have to have millions. You have to have a few thousand. And I've, I've had friends who were on that journey with me and they got, let's say, three, four places, paid them off or did whatever they did. They get the three grand, four grand of passive income. Yeah, that's not going to work in D.C., Chicago, L.A., New York. Yeah, yeah but it will work in coastal Alabama. It <laughs> will work in Thailand. It will yep. work. Like we are making conscious choices to live in places where we are going to have to work for decades. Yeah. Let's not let's not discount that. Yep. But 
I don't subscribe to people to just jump nine to five, burn the boats. Nah, life is more than money. Get your experiences, do a job you love, start investing, own five pieces of real estate or however, however many uh, stocks you want to own, get to a certain place and then switch to a job you love. Like yeah. enjoy life while you're doing this, but this burn the boat thing that's happening we can do it. I do get it. And I do understand it, but it's not the path for everybody. It wasn't the path for me. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think you are well living proof for sure that, Hey, we can max out our 401k and, and live a boring life and buy 10 candles in a year. It's, it's possible. Fine. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, yeah. And, okay. and it's safe. You still have your job. Um, you know what, if he would have lost all those condos and it were, you were investing in Oh six, guess what? You would have probably been well-educated for the backside of the I would have, crisis. if I would have, well, there's a reason I didn't lose everything. And I'm proud of 20 or 30 year old me for figuring it out. But uh, if I would have lost everything, the thing that I wouldn't have lost is the knowledge. Mm -hmm. Like I would just, I would have rebuilt it at some point. It just would have been very painful, but I don't want people to think I didn't make mistakes. I definitely made mistakes. I went through a couple, of, uh, I think I only, I went through one or two foreclosures in the 2008 time frame. Okay couple short sales. But the preponderance of what happened to me in that time frame, just real quick, because it's important for people to hear. Yeah. Half, half of my tenants stopped paying. Mm. They lost their jobs. Yeah. I'm like, I'm good. I got I got a hundred grand in the bank liquid as backup. I did the right thing. I had the backup. Yeah, but when half of your tenants stop paying, that hundred grand is not going to last very long. Yeah. And right. It didn't. Yeah. I negotiated with the banks. We came up with deals and I figured my way through. I refused to file bankruptcy and I made it out the other end where most of the people that I know who are in real estate at the time did not. Um, but I wasn't about to quit on my dream. So, yeah, man, no, that's uh, I, I obviously was living on the uh, investing on the backside of that uh, yeah. where it was hard to get loans and it was like almost impossible to get loans. But yeah, yeah, um, we were in North Dakota where obviously oil producing state and for agriculture, which do phenomenal dur during recessions. So we were right, right. we were actually booming and people were coming here and they mm. found out North Dakota was a state. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Yeah, it actually <laughs> yeah, is. yeah, that type of thing. Um, so. Well, I, I think, I think also it's like you, you do a lot of coaching and mentoring and, and did you, you know, through all of this, like, did you just figure things out and like you were doing your W2, you read a book, you did your thing. Did you like have a mentor or like someone that like was guiding you? Cause 10 is a lot to chew off of. And if you did it alone, kudos to you. I, I just didn't know if you had a mentor because I, I know you do coaching and mentoring today. I do that yeah. stuff as well. And I yeah. try to help people. Cause not enough people are taking advantage. I just, you know, curious from you. I coach now, but the journey that I'm talking to you about from to effectively 2002 to 2017, I did it solo. Wow. And I'm not saying that's correct. That's not the best idea because I didn't have, uh, you know, I didn't have a Mac to talk to, you know what I mean? I, I call it entrepreneurial depression. I was always working. Then I was hustling on the weekends, real estate and all that type of stuff. But, in reflection, I'm glad it happened that way. And my mentors at the time was my consistent action of reading books and sitting at the library. Yeah. Dude, I mean, I was the worst bookworm to the point where I knew all the, the librarians by first name. Wow. I was always, always, always there. It shit, it finally shit. And oh, by the way, and um some of the real estate agents that I work with kind of started to be mentors and stuff. Sure. I, I made a post about one, a 70 year old lady who told me some stuff to do and I'm grateful she did. But nowadays it's very different. When, when, when I, when I went after, um, when I got to financial freedom in 2014, and I, when I say financial freedom in that respect is I was making more money from passive income than I was getting on a paycheck for my job. Gotcha. I just, I didn't notice it, but, Six months into 2014, I hadn't looked at my bank account where I was getting regular paychecks. Mm. I was like, oh, my God, I'm OK. I'm OK. and shit. Um, but you know what happened, Mac? It, you, you, when you when you have it, then you start to quickly realize that life was never about money in the first place, mm -hmm. because all I was doing was pressing repeat on what I had always done. And it was getting very boring and stagnant. 
So I ended up going to a multifamily seminar. That's how my multifamily career started. Wow. Okay. I had a mentor because I went to that seminar in 2016. 2017, I hadn't bought anything. Mentor flies down from Providence, Rhode Island, gives me a kick in the butt for two days. And three weeks later, I had a contract on a mobile home park. It was wow. meant it, it was mental. It wasn't um it wasn't the semantics of it. I just had a mental block kind of thing. Yeah. And then I've employed mentors since. And the reason why I coach is just to help people along their journey. Shame on you if you do well and you don't post about it, tell people the mistakes you make, put your hand down the ladder and pull people up. Uh, so that's why I like mentoring now. Yeah, no, that's, that is awesome, man. I, uh, I, so you, you got into apartments, you, you hired a mentor, obviously getting through the hump of multifamily, which is obviously a whole yeah. different, whole different animal, it's right? Different. <laughs> it's, um, and, and I like how you said about real estate, it's like, it takes time, but then all of a sudden these checks started to be bigger than your paycheck. And then it's like, Whoa, <laughs> what is going on? I, I think I had that same recollection when I think my first refinance, like in this office building I'm in, like yeah. just the amount of money they were going to give me. And I'm like, Whoa, wait, like it's, what's the consequence is going to come. It's, it's pretty interesting. And I, but you know, for perspective, my mindset about life has not changed. Meaning I, I sold an apartment complex and I got a windfall of about 400 grand. Okay. I didn't go take that 400 grand and go get another apartment complex. I took that 400 grand and went and paid off two single family mortgages that mm. I had because yeah. that added another 2,800 bucks of passive income for life. Now that's not a great rate of return. It's not sure, but that's a great life. And right. isn't that the point, right? People are chasing weird definition of success based on numbers. I'm chasing it based on if I do this, how much time is that going to free for me? Yeah. 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 So I, I still think that way. Yeah. I, I And I think I think a lot of people don't think that way, right? No. Like they're they're going to no. take that 400 grand and, and buy the new house and buy a bunch of liabilities, really, that nothing yep. produces income. Now, if you can take 400 grand and have $2,800 at bare minimum, it's going to grow over time for life. How does your life change now? Even though it doesn't seem like it's a big rate of return, but it, it changes everything. I, mean, I guess I what I'm trying to tell people is like, society and TV commercials and Instagram are telling you that the measure of success is that thing that you buy or the next business or the next bigger asset or whatever. Yeah. And I'm suggesting by that statement, I don't think so. I think the measure of success is how much time you can free for yourself so you can travel around the world, spend time with Mac at 12 or one o'clock on a Friday afternoon. I went for a 10 mile, I, went, I took my kid um, I went to a parent teacher conference for my kid this morning. Yeah. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to drive home. I'm going to go for a 10 mile walk. I just have time. Yeah. That's awesome. Time. time. Yeah. I don't need assets. I need, I need more time. Yeah. Talk about, a. there ain't a more valuable asset mm -hmm. as you talk assets, right? Yeah. Big, better is always better, but you know, uh, if you can get your time back and not be willing yeah. to have everyone else pull you, man, how do you beat that? You know, instead of always, always chasing a number. No doubt. No doubt. Well, and I, I think so many people don't even know, like you ask them, like, what is your number? Like, do you even know what you live on versus what you're making versus what, you know, what is your purpose? What's your three-year goal? What's a target? You know, it's like, well, it's just to make more money. It's like, and what does that mean? The, the, what? the, the lifestyle comes up to meet it. Yeah. <laughs> it just keeps rising and rising, brother. And <laughs> Uh, listen, but I don't want to be pious and I'm not trying to like virtue signal. Nah, man, like I, I like assets and I like money, Yeah. but I like what they give me, which is time and control of it and protecting it. So yeah, this yeah I, I, I like that, man. I, and I don't think enough people talk about it in that way, in that regard, yeah. like you do, right? Like you have a great perspective that way. And, um, and, you know, I know you, you write about it a lot, right? Like, you, okay, it, maybe this is starting to clarify with you all the time in the library, knowing the librarians' names and every, they know your name. <laughs> is that yeah. where you became a writer or when, when did that trade? Like, I know that you've, I don't know how long you've been actually posting, you know, yeah. on LinkedIn. That's how I know you, right? And yeah. is that, is that something that you, you used to do in a cop car? You know what I mean? Like, is oh. that just come? 
this is this is relatively new. So I'm a mechanical engineer by by education. I'm a okay. I used to be a very analytical person. Writing was not my thing, nor did I care about it. Okay. The quick story is at the end of 2019, I met a guy. He's on LinkedIn. You probably know him. I met a guy named Jerome Myers. I think it was 2019. Yeah. And he and I told him this whole story, this like consulting, police, federal agent, um, real estate. I owned a couple of restaurants at the time, failed a coffee shop. Like I just told him, he's like, um, how come you don't talk about it? I was like, cause I just don't, I, I, I learned not to talk about my journey because I had three careers that if, if consulting knew that I was patrolling the night before and didn't go to work, then they, they would be like, Oh, he's tired from being a police officer. Like I just never wanted people to know what I was doing. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. So he goes, you should, I challenge you because you say you have a servant heart and you do. You didn't go be a police officer for the money. You want to go serve people. But I challenge you to start telling people your story. I was like, man, I don't really want to. And he brought me on his podcast. First thing I ever talked about on a podcast in early 20. Okay, that kind of felt okay. And then I was just like, F it. And I just started talking. And then it developed into writing. And then it developed into a personal brand. And then it developed, it just, it just happened organically. Really? And then I started getting into the lifestyle design stuff of how I figured out geographic freedom and to move around the world and evolve my purposes and stuff like that. So no, all that stuff just came from me being challenged by someone I respect. And I'm like, so you're saying I can help millions of people if I tell them a story. All right, well, I'll just do that. So I did yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, that's how you make that you make that sound easy what what did he challenge did he say <laughs> did he say maurice you just you know what post once a day you know what what was the specific challenge was it just to get the message you know how did he say deliver the message especially for black and brown folk especially for black okay. and brown folk from where where me and jerome grew up so he grew up in north carolina i grew up in inner city boston well my parents got me out of inner city boston pretty early but Mo, nobody has that um, perspective that you can have multiple regular careers. You can go chase what it is that you love. Um, people didn't know I was doing things like I would leave DC on a Wednesday, Thursday. Let's say, let's say, let's say Thursday. I would leave DC on a Thursday on a nighttime flight overseas, land in Turkey on Friday morning, read a book in my favorite town, and fly back Sunday afternoon. I was doing stuff like that my entire life. And he's like, if you don't, you claim to be a servant, but you're having an integrity gap. Mm. If, yes, you help people. I get that, Maurice. But you're saying that you want people to live differently, to see different versions of what success can be. And that's not money related. But you're not telling anybody. And now you can sense, by the way that I talk on LinkedIn and things of that nature, it's not money, man. It's how do we plug into the planet? How do we plug into life? Right. Yeah. Uh, um, so that, that was his, his, his pseudo challenge. And it wasn't, you know, like hey, one point at me, one statement one day, this is what he said. It was just over time. Okay. And then when I did it naturally, I start like people just started following. I'm like, why do I have 10,000 people following me? This doesn't make any <laughs> sense to me. And it's just been great ever since. And I turned it into a business, the, the try life on coaching business. And I'm um, just, I am still a little bit stunned how, how, how well it's done, but I love even more the fact that I have helped people change their lifestyle. That's what matters to me more. Yeah. Well, and you get to, you get to serve people wherever you're, is. wherever via zoom and, 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 and help them. And I That's think, it. That's and it. you, you know, based upon all the investments you took risks on, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, trying to think why the 99% and I'm going to keep saying the 99% because I don't, I think people should get curious on real estate. They should be yeah. curious about building a personal brand. They should be curious just to hit post because I don't think LinkedIn charges you any money to hit post, nor they do charge any, me anything to hit post. Right. Um, and then I was just watching something from like Gary V on the video side. He's like, he's like, Everyone should be posting three times a day on LinkedIn. And it's like, well, why would I do that? Well, because there's a bunch of people, like I see the Twitter space, right? And I, I'm not used to that space. I, I, I don't I'm know. I'm not how, either, but yeah. yeah. 
it's just a whole different clientele, a lot of hatred, a lot of, um, you know, uh, a lot of negative negativity, which yeah, I try to avoid. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what you'll love about LinkedIn is there are lots of, a lot of help on there. Everyone wants to help each other. That's what I like about this space. And yeah, you can build a brand on that. Maurice is living proof inspired me to do it, you know, and, and I think it's just a, a great place to share your message. And everyone has a message, no matter what you are doing, right? Like we all, we all yeah. have. And, and everyone, um, I, you know, I want to suggest this to people because not everybody needs or wants to get into real estate or assets for that matter. But here's another suggestion. Mm. We, we, we live in a time, we live in the greatest time in human history, because what you can do, you can create a personal brand the way you're talking about LinkedIn itself has 900 million follow or 900 million participants. If you can find a hundred who are interested in your message or a hundred people who want the knowledge that you have, I like, if you're a CPA, if you are a doctor, if you are a real estate person like me and me and Mac, if you can find them and they have interest in what you are talking about and want your help, you can create your own economy. People don't mm. want to go through companies to do things anymore. People just want to, yo, let me go talk to this dude, Mark. Let me go talk to this dude, Mo, get their information and I will pay them for their time. And people yeah. are making livings out of it. Yeah. So great real estate businesses. Uh, but there's a solopreneurship. There's going through social media. Like there's just so many ways to generate your own economy now. Yeah. That's what you're talking about. Be curious about that because that can free your life up. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that. I, uh, in, in, I think it's so important in 2024, right? You know, you did it in 2020, like during mm. COVID could have been a great time because everyone was online. Yeah, It's, it's yeah. a little harder nowadays, right? Like, but is it still a very good time? Have you missed the like perfect timing? No, this, oh. is, this is it. We're in it. We're, we're still at the infancy of it. Yeah. And some other platform will come up later. Or it'll be in the metaverse or it'll be somewhere else. Just get, as to your point, get curious. Yeah. Just get curious and see what people are doing or pay that person for their time and ask them, what did you do? <laughs> yeah, right. Like, why are you going to business school if that dude is doing exactly what it is that you want to do? Pay that dude or pay that girl to teach you what they did. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Ha having a mentors. Um, yep. Mentors. Um, and uh, I got a few questions that I always ask kind of to Hit wrap me. things in. Um, you know, yeah. what, are, what are you invest? Uh, what are you investing in right now? What are, What are you doing right now? I know you got development, you got real estate. Yeah. Condos. Yeah. Uh, so I'm Anything developing new, de develop, um, new. Well, I'm always doing real estate. I think that my, my style of real estate is very different now. So it was all okay. single family stuff. Then it's apartment complexes in the U S now it's land in the Mediterranean. So I'm building villas and condos that get sold one off. I'm building, building my own home too. Okay. But I was just talking about this, um, I still invest in restaurants, so I still own a couple of restaurants. Okay. But I was just talking to someone about this where my my next five years, whatever I invest in is going to be more from a lifestyle business perspective. Mm. So I like I wrote a if people are interested, you can go to trylifeon.com, go to the newsletter section, and there's a newsletter on lifestyle businesses. And the video that I have was talking to my boy in I was in Lebanon at the time, but I've done this in Greece, I've done it in the US where I just find really cool businesses and I'll go talk to the business owner because I get a sense that they created that business, not for max revenue, but for max life fulfillment. Mm. So whatever I most likely do next could be a bed and breakfast, small hotel, small restaurant, but like I would actually run it, not invest in it. Oh, okay. I'm going to do more of that style of investing from a lifestyle perspective because I can keep doing this real estate stuff until the cows come home. But I want to grow in different ways. I, I, I'm still growing in real estate, but I'm not really learning. Right. And that's, that's a challenge for me. I need to learn. Okay. Uh, otherwise, I kind of lose my momentum in it, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I think I was, <laughs> to your <laughs> to the point you were just talking about, I was talking very wealthy person. I mean, yeah. their dream was to run a brewery one day or something. Yeah, you know, it's, it's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know a guy who just bought a he just bought a winery, and I'm like, man, that's that's massive. And he's like, no, it was seven hundred grand. Huh. Now Jeez. that winery doesn't make a ton of money. He's like, I don't want it to make a ton of money. I want to create probably a thousand bottles a year, sell to my friends and family, yeah, have people come over and and live this lifestyle. And I'm like, 
Dang. Yeah. Thank you for giving me a key. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, and it for, is. For, for, it's all about money for everybody. Nah, man, there is a there is a section of humanity who's much more interested in lifestyle and doing things their way. That's that's where I want to be. Yeah, I like that, man. Um, what's one of your best investments and what's one of the worst? Hmm. Got a few bangers at the end here for you. I the, the best investment I've made is the one that has enriched me financially and lifestyle wise at the same time. So I'm going to have to say, I mean, I'm just saying this in a vacuum, but I'm going to have to say taking a leap of faith and buying my first 10 acre plot of land on an mm -hmm. Island in the Mediterranean. That was nuts. And it wasn't a lot. It was 300 grand. And that, 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 and when I got an offer on that land for one six, I was like, this is nuts. We're, we're we're developing it now so i i think okay. it's worth probably five five wow five, six, something like that cool but the money's great but what it gave me brother was relationships with people in a different place where i get to learn again and i'm also yeah. considered a respected businessman in that community and people know me and i like that that was my best investment and then worst investment by far was when i lost my focus in 2006, because I was doing so well, not because I was smart, but because there was a real estate boom, like you could just print money. Yeah, You could buy a condo off plan that wasn't built for 200 grand. And by the time it was built, it was worth 350. Like that's just printing money. Yeah. And I bought a, I bought a penthouse condo in DC, Washington, DC, not because it was a good investment or met my goal of financial freedom. I bought it because I wanted to be the big boy who owned a con who owned a penthouse in the uh, city. Yeah. And a bubble burst a year later. And uh, man, did I lose on that thing. But all the lessons I learned from it were were great. But that's definitely the worst one that I made. Yeah. Oh, good. Two good ones. Yeah. Two good ones. Um, what's your biggest fear? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh regret. Mm. That's it. Regret. The biggest fear is regret. If you if you if you are a street cop like me and you run into homes and you've been shot at and you've been in fights or you're in the military and you've seen some of the things I've seen in the Middle East and in Europe and and by the way again that's not glory and I'm not saying nope I can be killed at any time but when yeah. you see those things you start to realize that no that's just part of life. The biggest thing that worries me is the day before I know I'm leaving, if I'm ever that fortunate, oh, I didn't go do this. I didn't go to the Mediterranean. I didn't ask the girl. I didn't ask my boy to go hang out this day. I didn't spend enough time with my parents. I didn't try this business. Mm -hmm. I was too scared. Or I was following society's version of success when the, when the version of success that would make my heart big is this. That's why I am just this status quo is a default language. I have no interest in it whatsoever kind of guy. None. Yeah. <laughs> I could give a shit what people think about what I do, where I go. That's why I was telling you the story, the story about Turkey. Yeah. Four year span after I was a federal agent in Turkey, I revisited Turkey on weekends, maybe 35, 40 times easily because okay. that's my version of happiness. I don't want to punch off this planet, not having lived life to the fullest. So my biggest fear is regret. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. Well, when you're flying out there for, to read a book and fly home, I mean, that's, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's some, some fulfillment and uh, I love it, man. Where, yeah. um, where do you see yourself like just 10 years from now, let's call it 2033. And, uh, you know, where's Maurice going? What, what are you going to be doing? Mm -hmm. Um, and, and what's your lifestyle at that point? That's a good question. I have an idea because from a lifestyle design perspective, where we start in the process is to write your perfect day. Mm. And I rewrote my perfect day probably two weeks ago. And it talked about, <clears throat> I'm headed this way too. It talked about me being at home in Cyprus or somewhere, but most likely Cyprus living. I'm building a home on the side of a mountain. It has a great view of the Mediterranean and stuff. It's humble. It's not like this massive thing or whatever. Yeah. It's being there with my wife and my family and my adult kids right now who are 23 and 10, um, they have taken over the real estate stuff. 
I'm not so much doing real estate anymore as I am this try life on movement and helping people understand how to build lifestyle and to be unapologetic about it. I'm working on media projects with a couple very accomplished Emmy award winning people. Wow. I hope it goes somewhere. And if it doesn't, I have no regrets. See, yeah. I'm going after going after the stuff, right? How can I impact people in a way that they realize that do, they do not have to follow the status quo? I think I'll be working on that forever. But that's what I see myself in 10 years. Like I've shut down the machine in a way. Mm -hmm. I'll probably buy one asset a year for the rest of my life or something like that. But it, it won't be this heavy focus. It'll be more of living well in a place that makes me happy. Environment matters. I got to wake up by the Mediterranean, man, like every day. Yeah. And yeah, man, just helping people and enjoying life. I love it. I love how... Uh... You, you you kind of work off the the perfect day. I've not, I I wrote that down. I just I think that helps put it in perspective and then build off of that is and yeah. build the plan around that. Yeah, I like that because if you can vision it, right, you can consciously and subconsciously move towards it. But if you don't state to the universe or to yourself what it is that you want in mm -hmm. vivid detail, then you're just going to accept what you see around you. Right. I don't accept what I see around me. I'm not interested. I, I am interested in what we used to do when we were 10 years old, which is, remember, man, we used to run through people's backyards, jump the fences, dream about stuff. Yeah. Scrape our knee, get up. But you, your brain wasn't constrained by everything that people tell you. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I don't allow my brain to be constrained. I write it down in vivid detail. I imagine, I dream, and then I just go do it. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's awesome. I, I think it's a... Uh just good perspective for anyone that, that, that struggles with clarity. I mean, you find your clarity and then build, the, it. build the perfect it. platform for you to live on That's it. Uh, and something to chase. Uh, Cause if you're not chasing anything and you're just always trying to make more, it's going to be a very unhappy life for you. Uh, and you're going to get burnt out and mm -hmm. there's no purpose there. So um, I got one last question. What Never. doesn't follow the herd mean to you? Oh, I mean, it's exactly what you and I, talk about or what we talked about today and what we tend to talk about on social media yeah we we live in a society where i want to be around people but i prefer to be around people like yourself mm. we, we live in a society where by the time when you're in kindergarten you're free you're unconstrained you're eating paint and you're throwing color at the wall like it's just a good life and then you start to get into grade school and then compliance kind of kicks in johnny don't do this nancy have your mom sign this and then you get into high school and it's all competition it's who's going to be the mvp who's going to be the valedictorian who's going to be the prom king prom queen queen everybody starts getting a little bit crazy competing against each other i believe this it it it, it perpetuates into college Think about it back in high school, AP classes. Like, oh, I got to get yeah. an AP. It perpetuates <laughs> at the college. And the worst thing about our, the way our system works is that you go right into the work world with the same mentality. Oh, it's me and it's me and Matt. And we're both yeah. competing for the same position. I got to get this exec VP job. So what ends up happening is you come into the office at six, you leave the office at 9 p.m. because you want to get that exec VP job to the behest of I'm leaving my family alone and I'm not spending time. Mm. unfollowing the herd just means that definition and programming there's nothing wrong with it but you don't have to follow it yeah. and i and i and i say this all the time i got my last promotion corporately in 2013 because i started turning down promotions mm. and i retired in 2021 and everybody at work just kept looking at me you've been here 20 years and you're not a partner why you, you, there must be something wrong with you. No, I was building up a real estate portfolio of 2000 units in the background and traveling all over the world and being a street cop and being a federal agent. And I even acted on a Disney movie and like, we're doing this thing where everyone goes to the right. So, well, I guess I better go to the right. Yeah. Nah, man, I tend to go the opposite direction of where people go. And that's what I think you mean by unfollowing the herd. But it's your decision. And I also want to validate we need each other. Yeah. But just go find the herd that makes sense for you. you nobody yeah. wants to live on this planet by themselves and be the maverick and go ahead and die with your $2 billion by yourself. What is that going to do? <laughs> yeah. we, need, we need people, but it needs to be the people that make sense for you.
Yeah, no, I think it's it's perfectly. You, you, I think you have a unfollow the herd is is that you followed the like you know some people could term it as a corporate job, but yeah. you disconnected yourself where hey the pinnacle is being a partner. Yeah, the pinnacle for me is just to live right here and make do yeah. what I'm doing and get my time to have buy assets and do That's other it. things because then I imagine you're probably more successful than most of those people who are partner level today. Ah, I, I never <laughs> but, compare. I tell the so story. We don't one, want to compare. What? No, but, no, no. And there's, there's one guy who did something bad to me in the corporate side. I will never say his last name, but the guy's, his name is Mark. And he just made me feel like two inches tall when I was 26 years old. And he mm -hmm. said, this is, I was going to volunteer for air national guard stuff. And he's like, man, you're always, you're always doing stuff outside of work. You're, you're not going to make it in corporate life and uh we're not going to promote you and he he broke me he mm -hmm. broke me as a 26 year old this 40 something year old person and here it is and i've expressed my story to you and your listenership and i know that person is still hard at work in the same office mm -hmm. i don't smile at that i look at the system he came up in and i'm like man, he really got programmed to believe that life is blank, right? Mm -hmm. Why would you? And then he put it down on someone. That's, uh, that's what pisses me off. Yeah. You know? But yeah. other than that, you don't compare yourself to other people. Everybody's yeah. life is unique and it's okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. Good, man. No, I love, I love how you answered that. How do, how do we find you? How do we get on yeah. the, the tri-life bond and, and, and where, where are you most active? Um, so trylifeon.com is my coaching platform, but also my blogging platform. I'm starting to use it more for blogging these uh -huh. concepts than I am for coaching, but you can find me at trylifeon.com. I have the trylifeon podcast. Um, LinkedIn, I'm very active, as you know, just Maurice Philogene. I am on Instagram at Maurice Philogene, although I've taken a break for the last two months. I've just been totally off because of... um some personal stuff. And then when the war kicked off in the Middle East, I have a lot of friends there. I cannot post happy stuff and just fake it that I'm yeah. not hurting inside when my friends are hurting every day. Yeah. So man. I'm kind of off the platform. And, oh, and then from a real estate perspective, it's Quattro Capital, the Quattro Way.com, Q U A T T R O W A Y, the Quattro Way.com. So that's our, my syndication business, buying uh large scale multifamily with investors. And then, that people can email me at maurice at trylifeon.com and I respond to everybody. Wow. No, yeah. If you're uh, looking to change your life or try life on or or get in our in his ecosystem, I think he's worth reaching out to. He has a phenomenal story. I think he can inspire anyone. And I like how you put in this in this message, it's all the six inches between our ears that is holding us back. And it, it's wow. nothing more than that, man. And I think you of all people inspire yeah, millions of people on LinkedIn that, you know, to get after it. So keep doing your thing, man. I appreciate I will, you brother. taking the time. Thank you, man. It's my pleasure. All right. See you.